Greetings, everyone. This is Danny from hardtravel.com, your cruise experts. And uh, this week, I come to you with a very, very, very full heart, full belly, and uh, just ready to talk about cruising. So the last four weeks, uh, I've been cruising with my family. It's, it's something that I've been dreaming about for the last three years, really. Uh, it's the first time we cruise as a family of four now that my little guy is old enough to go on a cruise. So I'm going to talk a little bit about my experiences basically four weeks in paradise. It, it was beyond perfect. It was more than I could ever expect. And to be honest with you, I was surprised in quite a few wonderful ways. So I'm going to talk about that. Of course, we're here to talk about the cruise news updates for some big updates with uh, Royal Caribbean, Icon of the Seas. We're seeing the uh, first look at some of the restaurants and dining vent, or sorry, uh, bars uh, and entertainment venues on board the ship. Um, also an update of when I'm going to visit her. Uh, and beyond that, I'm here to answer your questions. So we're here to talk cruise. Of course, I would be remiss if I didn't uh, start off this way, but uh, do us a huge favor if you can hit subscribe and uh, hit that bell for notifications. We're going to keep the content coming. In fact, we're heading out this weekend for a filming trip to get three awesome ships that we can film and bring your way. Heading out to Europe a little bit after that to get uh, somewhere in the range of six to 10 ships that we're, we're focusing on, including the brand new Oceana Vista. So we'll talk about all that. But at the end of the day, we are a travel agency. We're a small family owned business. We love the fact that we get to work with you on your cruise, that we get to be a part of that experience. I know that you'll love working with myself, my team. Um, all of us are here for you. We feel completely blessed that we get to be part, as I mentioned, of your cruise experience, from the videos to helping you pick out, servicing the booking all the way through, wishing you well, and of course, all the surprises along the way. Now, um, once again, I'm going to dig in first to a bit of cruise news, and then I'm going to talk about my cruise and, uh, well, why I loved it so much and why I'm ready to go back time and time and time and time again. So, all right, let's dig in here just a little bit. So we did, um, uh, where did my, my notes go? Let me find those here. So one of the interesting things that we saw, um, you know, from different cruise lines is, is new ship build news. Now, Icon of the Seas, we got to see some new things that are coming um, on Icon. So I told you guys that I was going at the end of April to Finland to visit Icon. They've pushed it back just a little bit. They want the ship to be further along so they can showcase a bit more of it. So I'll be heading to Finland on the 10th of August. So excited to bring you back a lot of information, updates. And quite frankly, this cruise nerd is just excited to go to the shipyard. It's a shipyard I've never visited. Get on a brand new class of ship that nobody's ever been on. And of course, we'll be sailing on the very first sailing. We just had a few spots open up. So there are some, some spots on that very first cruise, the 27th of January, 2024 on the Icon. So if you'd like to join me, I want to say we have about 50 cabins of guests that are going. So we're just going to have an absolute blast together. And uh, I know my kids, after just getting off of Royal Caribbean, they're ready to go back once again. So <clears throat> Icon of the Seas, uh, what we learned is, uh, well, there's going to be a brand new venue in Central Park. And I'm, I'm really excited about that of all the announcements. I think that's, well, I'll, I'll talk about the other one in just a minute. But, um, you know, what I love about this is one of my favorite things is Central Park does have incredible ambiance. In fact, unlike any other venue on any other cruise ship in the world, I sailed on the Symphony of the Seas. We were lucky enough to be in the four bedroom villa, had an amazing star class experience a couple weeks ago. And, um, you know, one of the things that we loved was going to Jamie's Italian and eating outside in the evening. Another thing that you can do is star class. We also stopped by there a few times just for dessert as well. But one of the things we loved about it is they usually had musicians close by. You don't really get that. You get that some with Chops. You don't get that with Central Park 150 <clears throat> or the interior vintages. So this is a brand new, uh, it's a brand new jazz venue. So it's blues, jazz, and blues. So on this last cruise, my little guy, Teddy, um, he's eight months old now. Some of you have seen him in, in some of the videos. But one of the things that surprised me and made me really happy as a dad was he loved the live music. And the place that we actually connected with the most on it was Jazz on Four. So we would go down and uh, go to the, the jazz club, essentially. And he would listen to it, you know, standing up, I'm holding on to him and, you know, totally attentive, excited absolutely loving it. We became friends with some of the musicians there. Uh, Singer was incredible as well, too. Um, but just enjoying that jazz music. And I think showcasing it in Central Park is really going to open up 
a, an entirely new concept. And of course, you're going to now have the ability to access through escalators, you know, getting all the way down from the, up the lower parts of the ship up to the promenade, up to Central Park. And I think the flow is going to be a lot different there. Um, and so really excited for that one. Now, I was telling Taylor when we were on uh, one of the Norwegian ships recently filming was, you know, one of my favorite venues of all time on any cruise ship was Howl at the Moon. I love the concept of dueling pianos. It's fun. It's interactive. You know, you I, I've done it so many times on cruise ships, but I've seen it kind of disappear for some reason. And it seems that Royal is doubling down on that. They have a name on it yet. I think it's just called dueling pianos. Now, this is in the promenade. So another really awesome concept there. Uh, Taylor's going to be happy because you got the rye and bean coffee bar up in the Aquadome. So spreading it out. So now you're going to be able to get that on the promenade. You're going to be able to get that up there. No mention of Starbucks, by the way. Also no mention yet of the schooner bar, which, you know, it, it better be there. I'll just leave it at that. Or, or I might just walk off the ship. Did it say um, specifically <clears throat> that the, um, the dueling pianos were actually, in fact, on the promenade? Yes, there's dueling pianos in, in the Royal Promenade. Okay. So, and then Playmakers, of course, it was a huge hit. That was another one that my family absolutely loved. Because a couple of times, you know, as far as a premium dining experience, it's good. The pokey nachos are really, really good. The wings, I think I... Yeah, I, I ate a lot of wings. I'm not going to lie. Um, going and getting that big ice cream sundae in the evening was a big hit. But a couple of times we came back from excursions and, you know, none of the other specialties were open. Maybe it was three, four o'clock after visiting Megan's Bay or the beautiful beaches of St. Saint Saint Martin. And being able to order that from our genie was, was something that we really appreciated because you don't find that on all cruise ships. A lot of times, you know, from maybe two o'clock to four or till six o'clock is kind of a dead zone for premium food. Uh, so really, really enjoyed having that. So it looks like 1400 lobby bar um, is going to be kind of a, a, a type of a champagne bar. It looks like, of course, they're going to have an English pub. Once again, lots and lots of updates. In fact, since we last met, we got to learn that a uh, wizard of Oz is going to be a reimagined version of wizard of Oz is going to be the main entertainment. And I got to say this, you know, I've been on a lot of cruises and I've uh, been lucky enough to do it. Haven't done as many with my family as I would love. Like I said, we have a new addition. You know, we had COVID for a couple of years here. And so now I think my family's full speed ahead and cruising and my entire family and our extended family that was with us on board absolutely loved the entertainment on the symphony of the seas hero, the, the, uh, the water show. We went back to multiple times. It was incredible. Really, really amazing. Um, I still think the best show on any Royal Caribbean ship is flight. Um, we got to see that. That was wonderful as well. Never quite experienced it the same way, but uh, being able to head right to the front with the genie was also a pretty cool experience there. Um, and then of course, hairspray. My daughter had never seen hairspray. She wanted to see it. I think we saw it three times. Then we came home. She's watching the video of it now. She absolutely loved it. Ice skating show, same exact concept. And, you know, it really kind of, showcases what Royal Caribbean is all about. And to me, that entertainment is something that they do better than anybody else. Now, on entertainment and new ships, we also got to see that the Norwegian Viva is going to have a, a play that, or, or a show that I actually really, really like, and they're, they're bringing Beetlejuice. So a little nostalgia from, uh, from those of us who are a little, little older, uh, but also the play was really well done. The musical was really well done. So very excited to, to see that. But you know, once again, going back to Royal, Icon is going to be uh, un unbelievable, outstanding, wonderful. But one of the things that I've asked, gotten about 15 questions on in the last week is Utopia. We're still not hearing anything on Utopia. They're going to let Icon ride for a little bit longer. It looks like Utopia is coming in the fourth quarter. So if you can imagine, Royal Caribbean is going to be bringing online 12,000 new births in that range in 2024 because what we also saw from the other side right what we saw from carnival corporation is that they're slowing down new builds in a massive way so norwegian pretty consistent here a ship a year for the next you know six years five years you know oceana's got another one coming uh region has another one coming as well too beyond this we're seeing a little bit of show to slow down in new ships but royal and celebrity you've got a sense coming from from celebrity they are bringing out her sister ship, a fifth ship, uh, the first one that will be able to take uh, to, to be powered with uh, methanol, I believe, um, on that one. Um, but uh, but anyways, so that's some exciting new build ship news, if you will. Um, 
go down my list. The other thing is that um, they have that one little video clip that I haven't seen before that shows that the promenade's now opening out to the outside. Yeah, yeah. So, so Taylor was talking about, you know, if you, if you watch the announcement from Royal, um, you know, one of the interesting things is flow. And what they believe that they've done, and we've gotten to spend quite a bit of time with the designers of the ship, which nerd Danny is super excited about and get to meet them again over in Helsinki, well, in Turku, uh, Finland. Uh, but, you know, the ship really is different the way it's laid out. Right now, you know, the Royal Promenade on the symphony, you know, it, it's, it's relatively closed off. You do have the staircase at the end, but the idea is to kind of connect the lower decks and the upper decks. They're going to have more escalators than you'll find on any other cruise ship. Um, and also just the ability to kind of go up into central park because, you know, the escalators right near my happy place, Azumi sushi, which I did. Those of you who are wondering, I did eat my weight in Azumi sushi on the, the seven day cruise, had an awesome time with that. Uh, but it's interesting to see the flow of icon, you know, especially with the top decks. Um, you know, they, they have the series that they've put out the, uh, I think it's called making an icon. Um, but, uh, you know, seeing how they're handling all that water weight up on the top decks, you know, the massive water slides. But more than that, they've kind of tapped into that expertise that they've done so well with with celebrity, where things just kind of flow together. So, you know, I talked about it a little bit ago, but on this 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 cruise, we did a week on the Symphony of the Seas. And then we did three weeks on the Celebrity Apex. And, you know, both were pure perfection. The Apex is, is an incredible ship, totally different vibe, wonderful. My daughter loved the Kids Club actually on board. And uh, Raw on 5 is, uh, is now part of my DNA. Um, I'd go there every day for lunch. We'd have lunch with the family and then I'd go work. I'd set up my laptop and have them bring crab legs and then some crab legs. And then they'd also bring crab legs and, you know, sushi and sashimi and my favorite rolls. And then they'd bring more crab legs. So they have this thing called the Imperial Tower, which is a three-story high seafood tower. Some days I would just get the entire thing filled with crab legs. So one of the things that I loved about being in a premium suite, I hadn't really experienced the premium suites with Celebrity before either, is, you know, the butler's incredible. Our butler, Diana, we miss you, Diana, if you're watching. Please, please, please. We, we're ready to come back and, and spend much more time with you. Um, you know, but the butler does everything for you on board. You know, they'll set up breakfast and bring it in, have it all ready when you wake up in the morning, you know, take you to the specialty restaurants, coordinate mo multiple specialties coming to you. And on top of it, you get monogram pajamas. I mean, who doesn't want monogram, monogram pajamas? So I've got a couple pairs of those now lined up. We just had the best time as a family. You know, we didn't cook. We didn't clean. Um, we had an incredible room store. In fact, Andy, it was really funny when I walked in, he started to show me the room. And then he looked at me again and he said, wait, you showed me the room and uh, told me that he had watched our videos of those suites to learn about them. And, uh, and, and it was a great connection for when he got on board. Um, and we just loved every bit of it. You know, I, I, you guys know how much I love cruising, how much I talk about it. But four weeks with my family was it was just pure fun pure perfection. Now Eden on the, on the edge class ships, it's incredible guys. It, it, it's, it's one of the best meals I've ever had in my life. I think we ate there seven times out of 21 days. The, uh, the Branzino, unbelievable. The, um, the Reuben raclette. Uh, yeah. Anyway, melty cheese. You had me at melty cheese. You don't need to see much more, but the ceviche with the cilantro ice cream. I think that just set it all up. Well, the lobster too, and the filet mignon and the, anyway, all, all incredible. I'm going to be dreaming about food here for quite some time, but we just had an incredible time as a family. And once again, you know, what we do as a company is we sell cruises and uh, we get to be part of your cruise experience. We have a ton of experience and we're really excited to share that with you. Um, also, just because I have you, we're getting ready to launch a brand new learning platform through Hard Travel. Um, you know, basically taking it to another level of allowing our guests to get the most value for their money. So after you sign up for your cruise, um, and book it. We're going to have special sessions specifically for Star Class and Haven and Sky Class, but really guiding you through the steps start to finish to make sure you get the best value for your money, whether it's excursions, specialty dining experiences, getting on and off the ship. What we know we can do is take cumulatively, our, our company has hundreds and hundreds of years of cruise experience and pass it along to you to make sure that you and your family get the highest value in cruising. And I know that our team delivers that. So once again, we'd love to book your cruise. We're really excited for that as well. We've ramped up our staff. We've doubled our staff in the last six months. Um, and really, 
as a response to wanting to continue to deliver the best service in the industry and uh, to really be able to take great care of you. So we're really, really excited for all that. We have an incredible team ready to take that. All right. So let me dig a little bit more into some new build you know, news and some other news here. So we learned that Disney did a very un-Disney thing and bought a half-finished cruise ship. Of course, that was meant to be the most jam-packed cruise ship in the world. Um, and what they've done is they've kind of unwound that. So it's going from 9,000 occupancy down to about 6,500. So we'll have about 3,000 less people. What you're looking at is roughly the density of a Symphony of the Seas. Um, you know, a little more dense than that. But, but roughly in that, in that world, um, they're getting rid of the casino. They're Disneyfying everything there. And we just learned that uh, she'll be sailing out of Singapore. Now, Singapore, guys, is a world-class cruise destination. It's a foodie dream come true. It's a really beautiful city as well, country. It's, it's, it's really quite outstanding. So now we know where the uh, – now, there's no name yet. I don't think we've gotten a name. Um, but – we're seeing uh, that, uh, that Disney, once again, is going to be sailing out of Singapore. And my guess is that it's going to be really aimed at a, uh, a, a, an Asian market, um, you know, in, in that sense there. All right. Let me see here. Got some other news. Got a bunch of them. So Carnival, um, it looks like they're doing a little balancing act. Um, their, their earnings report seem to be on the upswing, which is great. Um, they have now taken the M or the Acosta Venezia, and she is now the Carnival Venezia. So they've taken three ships now, I believe, from Carnival brand. Uh, well, two, and then the third one's going to be the Firenze, um, and taken them over or Costa to Carnival. I think it's going to be interesting. I want to see these ships because they have some really cool venues. Like, you know, you think that you're at the Venetian in the in Las Vegas, where they've got like an indoor canal area. Um, and, and I've enjoyed cruising on Costa back in the day. Um, but uh, interesting to see what, what Carnival does with it and how they balance that out. Um, let me see here. Norwegian is partnering with the Miami Marlins. So I did see that. Big shakeup at Norwegian and Norwegian Holdings. Um, Mr. Uh, Frank Del Rio, um, who is actually at Sea Trade right now, he, had, he gave an interesting talk yesterday. Um, and that's one of the biggest conferences in the industry. But he is stepping aside the 30th of June. So we'll be cruising with him on the, the uh, Oceana Vista in early May. Very excited to see him again. Very, 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 very excited to see this brand new class of ship for, uh, for um, Oceana. It's, all, it's the first really in a decade. Uh, and it uh, looks to be absolutely incredible. I know I'm going to stuff my face a lot over those, uh, the, the time there on board. So Mr. Del Rio is, uh, is stepping aside as chairman. I think he'll still be on the board. Um, and then uh, Mr. Summer, who is now the president of Norwegian, will be the head of Norwegian Cruise Line Holdings. And uh, we're, um, Mr. David Herrera will be stepping up and taking um, Harry's uh, place at, at the helm of Norwegian. He's been there for a while, too. So excited to see, uh, you know, industry and, uh, and seeing things moving forward constantly. All right. What else do we have here? Prima back uh, sailing from New York. So I uh, had a great Caribbean season and uh, excited to see her back there. Turks and Caicos has lifted all COVID-19 entries. So you guys may or may not know, but we book a lot of beaches and sandals vacations and uh, beaches, Turks and Caicos. If you want to watch our video, it's one of the most stunning beaches I'd say on the entire planet and, and the resort itself is incredible. There's something for everyone there. Um, so pretty excited about that. And, and before I forget, we've had a, several people asking and I was going to lead off with this. We just had some, uh, you know, Alma Waterways came to us and we just got some space opening up on our hosted cruise. So our hosted cruise in December of this year, it's going to be sailing the Christmas markets of the Danube. It's awesome. I've done it three times now. I love the Christmas markets. I love sailing that Danube itinerary. Alma Waterways does an exceptional job with it. Um, but they brought, our, our space has been sold out now for almost a year, but they just got us five more cabins. So if you're interested in joining the hard travel team cruising this year, it's going to be early December, 2023. The ship is sold out. We have five set aside. The ship is sold out beyond that. It's the iconic Christmas markets starting in Nuremberg. You get to go to Regensburg, the turns and taxis Christmas markets, guys. It is the best Christmas market in all of Europe. Head on down and finish up in Budapest. So if you're interested in joining us, reach out now. This is the first announcement we're putting out. We'll let our customers know as well over the coming weeks. 
those five spots are going to go as quick as the first ones did. So let us know right away. You can reach out down below hitting the, uh, the contact form that we have down there. All right. Um, so here's a funny story. Um, we were sailing on American Cruise Line. So if you're looking for a small ship experience in North America, look no further than American Cruise Lines. We book American Cruise Lines. We'd love to do it with you. They are sailing in Alaska. So they do small ships that head up and, you know, big ships may go into Glacier Bay for a couple hours. They spend two days there. You can go kayaking and hiking and exploring up close and personal with wildlife. The cuisine is exceptional. They cruise on the on the uh, the Columbia River. Um, was it the Columbia and the Lamet, I believe? There, where you can go between uh, Lewiston, Idaho, and uh, um, I think Portland, Oregon, is where it, where it kicks off from. So amazing river cruise options on the modern river boats. That's what we have filmed. So we just put that out on our channel. Up and down the Mississippi, they can go all the way up to Minnesota, uh, Red Cloud, Minnesota, down to New Orleans. That's a 21 day, by the way. Um, but they also have these really cool coastal cruises. So you can go up and go from New England, um, you know, sail Cape Cod, and they have these brand new catamarans that hold about 100 passengers. So very stable uh, because they have the dual hull. Um, but they build all their own ships. They own the shipyard where they're built. But really incredible small ship cruising. We were on a cruise in December with the CEO and uh, with the head of sales. And they were asking me over and over again, you know, what are the trends in river cruising? What's going on? And I said, guys, we've been selling the heck out of Ama Waterways. I think the first one was 45 days, 60 day river cruise where you can hop between three or four river cruises. And uh, guess what was introduced yesterday, Taylor? The longest river cruise in North America. 60 days. So you can hop, you can get the North, uh, the Pacific Northeast, uh, there's Northwest. You can hop on over, do, they, they do this really cool national uh, parks package where you go down uh, to Glacier National Park, Yellowstone, Grand Teton, then to the Mississippi, cruise all the way down. So you go from Jackson, Wyoming, down to New Orleans, Louisiana, then head on up to the main coast and har harbors, Yankee Seaport. So really, really cool uh, a way to do, um, well, paying tribute to America's 250th birthday. Seems like yesterday she was 220 years old. Anyway, all right. So uh, American River, American Cruise Line, once again, super excited for that as well. Uh, News-wise, I think that's most of the big things that I wanted to touch on today. Anything you can think of, Taylor, that I, I neglected? I'm sure you guys will remind me too if I haven't, haven't, haven't brought it up and uh, answer questions, but... Well, the, I'm, I'm dying to dig so, in. Well, the, the one question that I saw that I think would be the first one to talk about where you can for you, it's a much longer answer, was somebody was saying, what makes the icon better than an Oasis class ship? Okay, great question. So somebody was asking, what makes icon better than an Oasis class ship? Well, the first thing is I'll say, I'm going to sail on it and let you know. But my thing is, in this case, by making it bigger, I think that they've increased and doubled down on the things that people really love right? The top deck fun, six water slides. I mean, unique features that, that set it apart. I also, I'm going to miss the two bedroom aqua theaters in the back, but I love those sunset suites. They're ones that I've been absolutely dying to get into for some time, but you know, it, it's different concepts and venues. So one of the, one of the issues with the, the aqua theater, it gets rained out. That's not going to happen anymore with the aqua dome. So there's improvements with things like that, but also they really focus this ship a lot on families. And I think they've done some great things to separate out the spaces. So, you know, having so much family space in where the boardwalk was previously, you have a new pool destination. You've got a buffet for families. You've got dining for families, lots to do. I think it's actually going to give more to do for people that's going to separate out and spread people out around the ship. You know, going bigger, they're able to do things that they never have. But I think, and I know it sounds very simple, but I think the way that they've improved the flow between the different areas is going to take some of the pressure off of the elevators. I think it's also going to allow you to kind of connect yourself and your vacation, but also have the separation, right? So there's adults areas where adults can be adults. There's family areas where kids can run around and be kids. And I think they've really perfected that with Icon. Proof is going to be in the pudding because I thought my cruise on Symphony, I don't think anything gets better than that. I, I love the ship. We love the wonder as well. We enjoyed every minute of it. But I really think the flow is what's going to change it, how things are connected together. And of course, you know, the gin and tonic bar, swim up bar, 
Well, that sounds pretty darn perfect to me. I think even beyond the flow, I think it's the first shift that we've seen in intentional positioning of sweets. Yeah. No, no. I, I mean, I, the, the other thing, well, yeah, I, I, my brain is comparing it with the whole industry. I think one thing that Royal hasn't done as well as the rest of the industry, like like celebrity, what I just experienced with the retreat, Norwegian, what I've experienced with the Haven, is having the sweet neighborhood with most of the sweets around it or in it, I think is going to be a massive game changer as well for the sweet experience. Um, you know, just in general, the ability to have more of your own space, it changes the entire cruise experience. I got to experience personally the last four weeks, and uh, I'm really excited. I loved what they did with Wonder. But to me, this is that next level. And it's something that I've always thought Royal could improve on. So there you go. All right, let's dig in. So Desiree leading off with a super sticker. Thank you so very much for that. And uh, on the getaway, September 18th to, uh, um, sorry, March 18th to 26th. So glad you had an awesome time. That makes me very, very happy. Um, any plan to have our uh, host crews? Yes, we're going to get back to these in 2024. To be honest with you, it's it's a workload thing. You know, planning group cruises is actually quite a bit more coordination and work than planning individual cruises. Uh, there's, of course, things that, that symbi sim there's symbiosis that makes that better. Um, but stay tuned. Give us another month or two. You're going to see some coming for 24, 25, and uh, some Norwegian ones coming up as well. We're going to get back into the hosted cruising. We love it. And we know that, uh, that it's even better when we get to experience it with you. Good evening from Ulis, is it Ulis, Texas? Hello, how's it going? Hello, Fabian. Clint, uh, hope you and your family had great cruise. I hope you had an awesome time on the symphony as well. I know you were right behind me, so I'd love to hear more about that as well. Um, Icon looks great, but uh, too expensive for me. Look later on. You know, of course, the, the newest, brightest, shiniest ship is going to be pretty pricey, um, but look in the fall. I'm seeing some prices go down pretty, pretty considerably, but, you know, maybe wait just a bit. Getting more and more excited about our Icon Cruise next March. I'm excited for you as well, Kevin. There we go. That's the one we just spoke to. Very excited about Dueling Pianos. Me too. I just, there's an energy that you get with Dueling Pianos with, you know, two musicians that can go longer. They, you know, it, I don't know. I, I I remember doing that on Monarch of the Seas. They used to do the Dueling Pianos and I, I forgot that, um, oh, what was that, the cabaret that they had right in the middle of the ship. And just having the greatest time, like loving it completely. I, I, I love it. Oh, they better have the schooner bar. If not, I'll be talking to somebody. Trust me. Trust me. I'll be, I'll be raising some heck. Uh, we're watching you from the Haven Lounge on the Bliss, docked in Puerto Vallarta. Well, I hope you're having an awesome time on the Bliss. I love the Bliss. Can't wait to get on board soon with my family as well. Uh, one improvement on Icon Over Oasis is the location and weatherproofing of the Aqua Theater. Yep, absolutely. Absolutely, positively. Um, they need to get rid of cats on Oasis. I don't disagree with you. Nick, where are you, you listening? It's time. I mean, I'll take hairspray. I'll take, now uh, Grease is kind of getting tired as well for me. Um, you know, there's so many good new musicals out there. I, I think it's time to swap out cats for sure. I thought that like five years ago though. Uh, Brent, uh, big thank you to Rick and your team for helping my in-laws and us book our Odyssey of the Seas cruise out of Bayonne. I love that, hear that Brent and the, love working with you and your family. Thank you so much for that. We really liked Intense on Wonder. Uh, check out Hero in October. Yeah, I mean, Intense is awesome, right? It, it really is. It's the first ever major production show on any cruise line that's all female cast. Um, well, I guess Six did that on Norwegian, but this is totally different because it's just 10 bad to the, to the bone warriors. And it, it's what they're doing is exceptional. Agree on cats. I, I, I do too. Uh, I'm sure it was great. Yeah, there we go. Lots of opinions on cats that I don't disagree with. Um, what about the casino? Is it bigger on icon? I would assume it is. They make a lot of money in the casino. And once again, casino is another one of those venues that draws people away from other venues. So I think it's great. Uh, will they be giving uh, any more information, uh, concept photos about staterooms and suites? Probably. You know, they're, they're doing kind of a slow roll here, which is a great marketing technique. So I, I think that will happen for sure. Uh, learning lessons to improve our experience. I can't wait. Brent, absolutely. We're, we're excited to roll that out. Should be coming out early to mid-April. Uh, brand new platform. And these are, these are guests who have booked with hard travel. So you're going to have your special access to different content, special access to, uh, to the ability to really learn about your cruise experience and hone in on getting the most out of it. 
Uh, good evening. Thanks again to Chris for all our help for our trip for Navigator next week. Uh, looking forward to eventually checking out Icon. Andy, I know Chris is really excited for you as well. In fact, you were one of the reservations we were talking about, talking about people that were coming up in the next couple weeks that are sailing. So he's very excited. Lori, we are on the transatlantic bringing Venezia over to New York. We're really looking forward to this new carnival experience. Well, let us know what it's like. Uh, glad to hear you're excited about the Sunset Suites. I have a junior sunset booked in February 25. Never had an aft room. Excited about it. I love the aft of the ship. It's my happy place. I love it. I love it. I love it, though, on the icon. I do not have an aft ship because I'm also a frugal man. All right. Um, I'm booked through HAR for the Sunset Suite for the inaugural cruise. Thank you again, Zisa. Uh, need more pictures, concepts of the Sunset Suite. So we have a couple in our rendering of our, and, and if you haven't watched it, make sure that you check out our um, our suites video that we did, or our rooms and suites video that we did. And as soon as we have more content, trust me, we'd love to bring it to you, and we will. Uh, we're thrilled to meet you on Apex. Kevin and I love chatting all about things travel with you. I love meeting you guys as well. And what better venue to talk about travel than uh, having a giant martini in my hand? I'm just saying just saying. We, we had an awesome time. Enjoyed meeting you guys as well. Now, oddly enough, the next two weeks, there were a lot more kids on board. And I always tell everybody, if you're booking during spring break, even a product like Celebrity, Holland America, Princess, just know that, well, we had, let's put it this way, there are 500 more kids the second and third week of March than there were the first week. I loved it. I had a great time. But man, those kids, they really slowed down the internet. Yay for hosted cruises. These are coming back. We're looking forward to meeting you and traveling with you guys. Sandra, hope you had a great time traveling 30 days until Prima and it cannot come soon enough. I have yet to cruise on Prima on a revenue sailing. I can't wait to bring my family. Super duper duper excited for that. Uh, agree, Oasis. Yep, I, I guess Cats needs to go. There we go. Oh, it's finished. It's all nine lives. I think it's had 12 lives because... <laughs> Andrew Lloyd Webber has been making money off of cats for like 35 years now. And uh, yeah, I'm going to say that wasn't Taylor Swift's greatest work was her spent in cats. But anyway, I uh, wonder about 200 days, any must while I'm on it, everything. But of course you got to go to soft serve and you got to go to Azumi. Those are my must on any Royal Caribbean ship. But uh, you know, wonder, you know, it feels substantially larger than symphony. It's wider. It's actually quite a bit wider. You feel that in the promenade. You feel that in several of the venues. I love the air conditioned um, uh, solarium as well. That's an awesome feature and uh, really everything. I mean, well, I almost forgot the Mason jar. If you haven't signed up for it, sign up for it. Cause you won't regret the Mason jar. Lydia, our awesome friend. Welcome back off the, on the 15th on ovation of the seas for 27 days. That's right. You guys are heading and doing the Trans-Pacific. Have an awesome time on board. We had a great time. Thank you again for everything, uh, you know, for messages and, and sending stuff over. You're you're awesome. Um, you know, Teddy, Ava, and I, we just, and my, and my wife, Chris, so we just had the best cruise. I mean, 40, 28 days together and it didn't hurt. 28 days in premium suites is, is, is something I don't think anybody would not enjoy, but it was just so good to, you know, I, I worked, but I took the pressure off of doing the day to day and it allowed us to be together as a family eating and enjoying and just having a really great time. A learning center sounds great. You don't know what you don't know. Absolutely. Kevin, excited to share that with you. I love all your videos on Azamara. Just came back from one last month, going back in April. Definitely a wonderful experience. I love Azamara. We just um, got the details in place to film their last two ships. So coming up in May, we're going to be filming the Azamara journey and the Azamara Onward. So we'll have all four of the ships. I haven't seen the Atlas Bar yet. I'm really excited for that on Onward. And we're really expanding our relationship with Azamara. So hopefully you're booking with us and uh, we'd love to help you as always. And guys, let me know when your next cruise is and more importantly, what are you looking forward to the most? I always love to see where you're going, what you're looking uh, for, and uh, there we go. Uh, Rocky, thank you so much for the info you provide. Just back from 14 days on Allure and had a fantastic time. Love that. Andy, have you taken the Greenland cruise out of Boston on Royal Caribbean? It looks interesting and curious on your opinion. So I haven't. But, um, you know, one of the things that I love about cruising is I love cruising in general. Obviously, I just spent four weeks in the Caribbean. Nothing not to like about that. But I really like cruises that take you to spots that are harder to get to. So, you know, one of the examples of that might be, you know, in South America, going around the Horn and going to the Chilean fjords, going to a lot of beautiful places. 
where you may not fly individually to each of those locations. You know, or Alaska, for example, that's beautifully visited from a cruise ship. I love cruise and land, of course, there. But Greenland is one of those places where you can get on the ship round trip in Boston. You can go visit areas that are kind of hard to get to. You got to fly in. You probably do one at a time. Iceland is another one of those destinations. Uh, you know, I love these destinations like the Baltic, too, where you're going to visit a diverse collection of areas and see lots of things that are absolutely beautiful. So my opinion is go. It's a great one. Now, by the way, guys, we have a lot of people that reach out to us way too late for Royal Caribbean Panama Canal cruises. Right now, they just put out the Radiance. I booked a junior suite and a grand suite yesterday. Um, and uh, the Radiance, September 2024, has that 15-day Panama Canal, amazing itinerary. The space is going to go really quick. The other one that really excited about is today we booked a Regent World Cruise that just went live. It's probably close to sold out. But if you're interested in Regent, you're interested in world cruising, we have a little bit of space on the Viking World Cruise. We booked Oceana World Cruises, Regent World Cruises. And I'm just going to throw out one other thing that I'm, I'm kind of giddy about is we've been talking to our friends at the new Crystal. Before the pandemic, Crystal was our happy place. It was just a magical destination in and of itself. I think it's going to be better than before. Now, they broke the big news a couple of weeks ago. Nobu is back. And those of you who know how much I love sushi probably know how much I love Nobu and having Nobu every single night included. Yeah, I'm pretty excited about that. But also, they're taking more rooms off the ship. They are owned now, not by the same entity. So, you know, the, the people that let us down, which was Genting out of Hong Kong, and uh, they've really let us down, they're gone. And the new company that's taking over, it's a it's it's a conglomeration, but it's head but headed actually by a well the head of Viking Cruises best friend in the whole wide world, um, uh, Manfredi de Orviedo. Orviedo, I'm, I'm getting it wrong, but uh, he he and his family started two cruise lines, including Silver Sea. They bought the two ships. They've brought back most of the senior management that did do a great job with Crystal. They brought back a bunch of employees. We have some friends in the industry that are butlers elsewhere that are going to Crystal. And I know, because I know the quality of them, how good the quality is going to be on the ship. Um, but also by partnering with Abercrombie and & Kent and by partnering with Cox & Kings, two phenomenal land-based companies, I think they're going to deliver some of the best immersion and destination-focused experiences on the planet. So we are working to possibly being on the first cruise, July 31st. I think it's out of Rome, but more to come with our relationship with Crystal. There you go, Lydia. You've got some friends on board sailing. Um, you'll love the Atlas Bar for sure, Danny. Definitely see you right there now. Um, just need a uh, just need a martini. And I don't know what happened. I love gin and tonics. You guys know that. But somehow on this cruise, it could have been the unlimited flow of Tanqueray 10. But um, I reconnected with two of my favorite drinks of all time, and they're not related at all. A beautiful, delicious Tanqueray 10 martini, extra dirty. Love it that way. And also the good old Cadillac margarita. I had quite a few of them. There's just something about dining up under the stars, the rooftop garden, having incredible ribs and wings. And uh, Bruce, who works with us, who's uh, just an incredible human being, along with being amazing at what he does. Um, he said it's one of the best steaks that he's ever had in his life. And uh, Bruce grew up on a farm, knows a little bit about steak. And uh, for him to say that, it was really exceptional. So anyway, reconnected with a couple of my favorite drinks. Don't worry, I had a couple gin and tonics. And I also ate my weight in soft serve ice cream and gelato. But there we go. All right. Is your plan to record an icon tour on the inaugural or sooner? It is. So if not on the inaugural, then our hope is to do it. Um, we're hoping there's some shakedown pre-inaugural cruises. That's our real goal there. 52 days on our B2B on Harmony. There you go, Kevin. Excited for you. Um, our next cruise, Liberty. First cruise with my mom. Um, uh, let's see. Liber let's see. Liberty of the Seas. Looking forward to my first star class cruise in March of 2025. Brett, you will not look back. It's a good thing you're doing Liberty first. In fact, we're going to have some videos for you because uh, we're going to be filming Liberty this coming week. There you go. Susan, it was, a, it was a pleasure meeting you on the Apex. Thank you for taking time to talk to me. It was one of my favorite cruises, 51 days until the wonder. Susan, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me as well. I got to meet so many wonderful people on these cruises. Um, you know, one of the best parts of having four cruises was four sets of brand new people that, uh, that we got to share the love of cruising with. Nope. 
Uh, Alan, uh, we'll try to find you guys. Uh, we're on deck 10. There we go. 32 days until Wonder Mike. That's pretty darn exciting, exceptional, and, uh, and very, very, very excited for you. All right, so I had a couple more questions that were talking to me about my cruises. And because I just did Star Class and I did Premium with, with uh, Celebrity, um, I've had a lot of people asking me to compare Star Class, Premium Celebrity, and Haven on Norwegian. And here's where I'm going to start out with. I think Royal and Celebrity do a better job of including everything up front. And when they say it's really all included, it is. Unlimited specialty restaurants, you know, the worst part of, uh, of leaving the Symphony of the Seas was my daughter had handmade pasta at Jamie's every day. And that was her favorite thing, pasta and butter. I guess that's what eight-year-olds like. And uh, we got on the Apex and they were, uh, you know, in the buffet where we've been to a million times before. They were serving pasta, you know, that came from a bag that was reheated. My, my daughter's like, that's not, that's not noodles. That's not spaghetti like Jamie's. I'm like, well, no, it's not handmade pasta. So by the second week, she forgot and, you know, was able to give her that again. But anyway, you might get spoiled there. So inclusive nature, premium on celebrity, your gratuities are included. Honestly, unlimited specialty dining from all the specialty restaurants. A huge hit for us was one that I didn't really expect. The French restaurant for lunch, killer. And the French bakery. We had so many delicious baked goods, once again, included in the premium experience. Um, you know, the butler, once again, has the right amount of sweets, about five sweets total, which is really the max of what they should be doing. Um, and uh, you can get whatever you want, whenever you want. Now, I love the, the retreat space. I wish it was all encompassed. That's where Norwegian blows everybody else away. Having everything in the Haven space, it's one thing that I did miss a little bit with Celebrity, and a lot bit with Royal, to be honest with you, and I'm looking forward to with Icon, is having the Sweet Sun Deck. We didn't use the Sweet Sun Deck on our whole cruise. It was kind of disconnected from where we were going and what we were experiencing. Um, once again, no complaints. We loved our Star Class cruise. The food was killer. Central Park 150 was awesome. Chops was awesome. Jamie's was awesome. But I hadn't spent that much time on ships that had hooked seafood. And hooked seafood was stellar. The, the oysters, unbelievable. The ceviche was really, really good. The two-pound Maine lobster, you know, going and having a Maine lobster and then heading over to Azumi for lobster prepared a different way. Anyway, it was, it was exceptional. So what I'll say with Norwegian is I love the design of their new ships. I love the Haven sweet space. To me, that blows the other ones out of the water. Where it lacks just a little bit is the inclusive nature. Now, if you buy the free at C+, and you upgrade to the streaming internet, now you've got what Royal and Celebrity are, are giving to you anyways. Um, you know, so I, I wish that they included a little bit more. Um, the, the, the service on all three is exceptional. I think they all do an amazing job with that. But it also comes down to me, three very different vibes. Norwegian's vibe on their ships is different than Royal and Celebrity. It's kind of in a way, almost a mix between the two. Um, you know, of course, everybody having the unlimited alcohol package, for some people, that's a pro or that's a con, but I love all three experiences. And I think where they're going makes a big difference. I think who you're cruising with makes a really big difference, but I would never hesitate to cruise in any of those three experiences. So there you go. Great meeting you and your family on the symphony. Your mom uh, told my wife a great story about her dad forgetting his teeth uh, when I forgot my glasses. Uh, thanks for all your great advice. No, it's awesome. We Once again, Another awesome person that we got to meet. We really, really enjoyed meeting you. It was an awesome, awesome thing. There you go, Alan, on deck six. There we go. Um, Chad, Har is the best in the business. We love the Haven two-bedroom or Disney family balcony for extra bathrooms and beds. What are the same room types on Royal Caribbean or Celebrity? So I'll just throw this out there and say Celebrity doesn't really have that, with the exception of, you know, the penthouse suite, watch our video on the Celebrity Apex, Beyond, or Edge in the penthouse suite. You'll understand why I loved it so much over the last three weeks because it's a two-bedroom in a way that, you know, Norwegian and Disney don't really have anything designed like it. So that is unbelievable. Of course, the iconic suite too is, uh, but I love those. Beyond that, the Royal Suite has that second, the half bath, so you can still get the premium. This is all on Celebrity but with Royal, the two-bedroom grand suites are great with that. They're, they're really beautifully configured. The two-bedroom aqua theater suites, to me, blow away the two-bedroom haven suites. It's not even close. Absolutely so much more space. 
diversity of space. I love that. But on Icon, the what is it? The family infinite balconies. Those have the split bathroom. I believe the Surfside family suites have the split bathroom configuration as well because I too absolutely love it. I always say it saved a lot of marriages, saved a lot of family vacations as well, having the two bathrooms. Um, but well, and, and also of course, Chad, re reach out. We, we can kind of go over that a little bit more in depth. But what I would say is, you know, with Celebrity, the Penthouse, the Iconic Suite, those are really the ones that are going to be like that. Uh, and then on Royal, the two bedroom Aqua Suite, the, the, I mean, the Royal Loft, there's, there's nothing quite like that, especially in Alaska. Good luck finding one. I think they're all sold out for 2023. Um, and then, um, like I said, those, those new brand new infinite family balconies. Ate it hooked two nights on the symphony. We loved it. I did as well. And uh, hello, everyone, hard travel and everyone in the chat. Yeah. So, you know, once again, uh, unbelievable time on board for the last four weeks with my family. Uh, we love that we get to share it with you. We've got a lot more content coming your way. I know I took a break for a month. I was thinking of doing it while traveling. And you know what? I just decided this is that time that's precious and reserved for my little ones. Uh, little Teddy loved the beach. He loved swimming. He loved, he enjoyed every bit of it. We would go out. He, he really enjoyed uh, sticking his tongue out in the wind. That's his new favorite thing. Awesome. One downfall is he did get four new teeth while on <laughs> the Celebrity Apex. So that was a little rough for all of us, but but we absolutely loved it. Um, but, uh, you know, getting to have that, once again, we've got a lot more content coming your way, lots more things to share with you as well. So I'll finish it up with the last couple things. Um, what's this I hear about a cruise with go-karts? Check out the Norwegian Prima. Check out the Norwegian Bliss, the Norwegian Joy, the Encore. We've got them all filmed. That's cool. It's really, really cool. And uh, Malou, let's see here. Um, we've been keeping Ann busy uh, booking our cruises until the end of 2025. And I've been watching those cruises. They're pretty exceptional. And Ann does an awesome job as well. So, all right, guys, today I'm going to wrap it up for now. I appreciate you spending the time with me. Once again, we're going to get back on our regularly scheduled live stream. We've got a lot more coming your way very, very soon. Lots more content, some different types of content as well. So stay tuned. Of course, when you're ready to book, let us know. And as always... Have an awesome cruise and ciao for now.